Welcome back to another episode, you beauties. I'm Zach, joined as always by Preston. Hockey is back this week. Yes, sir. October 4th. What time is the game at? It's 1, like 1 p.m. 1 p.m. Yeah. Our Buffalo Sabres are going to be playing in Germany. Oh, my God. I'm so hyped for it. Yeah. Opening night game doesn't belong to the, the Florida Panthers. It's the Buffalo Sabres. Let's go. Let's go. Let's, speaking of that, you know how we're the NFL, they do like this opening night thing where it's like the Super Bowl champions against like a, whatever. Oh, yeah, they try to stuff. make it a good matchup to open up the I year. I think yeah. the NHL should implement that. Like they typically, it, you, I thought normally like the first one of the first games of the year was the banner raising really? game. They try to. Didn't didn't Vegas did it last year, right? Yeah, I, I know, but they the, weren't the first game because no. they're on the West Coast. But I think, think I think the game was at nine o'clock or ten or something. Yeah, because I think the first game wasn't it like Pittsburgh and uh, Chicago. Yeah, like I Bedard, think there, Crosby. there was a game at like seven, and I think Vegas was. They the try to game. they try to have good matchups for opening night. I mean, I will say though, I mean, who this, do the Panthers play for their for their first game? I have no idea. Um, I will say though, the Sabres versus Devils matchup is a really good one. Two young flying teams. Lindy Ruff revenge game too. We'll get into that a little bit later. Actually, do you want to get into it now after you're done looking that up and get it out of the way? Oh, the NHL it? app so it, the NHL app is ass. Florida Panthers schedule. They open up the season against Tampa Bay. That's a really good wait, game. When do they play? Wait, hold on, I might be wrong. You know they do. Yeah, Wednesday. No, wait. I think that, that's a, what. Okay, no, what? the first game is against Boston. Okay. Is that the 8th or ninth or 10th? The 8th. The 8th. So that's opening night. So there, what other, do, doesn't, do we know what other, I mean, not that it really matters. It's going to say what other games there are. On the 8th? Yeah. I know Seattle plays. I don't, that's something random as hell, but I. There's I, a game at 4.30 between the Blues and the Kraken on a Tuesday. That is the, <laughs> that's crazy. I, okay. I knew Seattle played. Because yeah, the other two matchups make sense. Like Bruins, Panthers, like. Seven o'clock. Banner rating ceremony for the for the Panthers. Mm-hmm. Over to the season. The Bruins are a good team. Should be a good game. Rival. Then you have uh, Utah's first home game ever against uh, Connor Bedard and the revamped, revamped Blackhawks. Both those games. All three of the games I think are going to be on ESPN. I don't get Blues and Crack in at four thirty. That's so random. Is that the first game of the season yeah, outside it's a, of? Yeah, it's the first game of the year. Yeah. All right. So. I want to get a little bit into the Sabres naming Rasmus Dahlin captain. Mm-hmm. We all knew it was coming. Yeah. Um, I know we didn't really talk about it much, but when Akpozo got traded, there was rumblings about, all right, so the Sabres going to be, have to name a new captain. Dahlin was the easy answer. He is a leader. He doesn't seem like that outgoing guy, but they, I've heard everybody and their mother saying he's one of the loudest guys in the locker room. Uh, yeah, I think he's found his voice over the last few years. Um He's definitely a kind of guy that can lead by example too. I think he's the hardest working player on the Sabers, hands down. You know, I they do really think he cares. He really wants to win here. I think he really likes being a Saber. I think he's like everything you want out of a leader. You know, it wasn't like a situation where I think with Jack Eichel previously, where he I think he was named captain too early. Not mm-hmm. saying that he's not worthy of being a captain. I think the Sabers were kind of in a different spot, and you know, he was the face of their franchise. He was supposed to be like their franchise player. So they, they name him captain because, you know, that's ten, typically what you do when you have a franchise-type player. Uh, so, but with Darlene, you know, he had an A for a couple years. You know, Kyle Poso was a good captain. Um, obviously, with him retiring and Gergensen's moving on to Tampa Bay, uh, I think Darlene was the easy choice for the captaincy. Mm-hmm. I think a little interesting to see they're having four assistants. I was befuddled yeah. when that happened. We I had- mean, I guess that's... Should be seen as a good thing. You know, you have so many good leaders in the room. Like, you want to acknowledge all of them mm-hmm. the, the best you can. I mean, I don't know how they're going to do rotations. I don't know if, like, two of them are going to be on away games and two yeah, of them are going to be Yeah, that's what's going to happen. So, it was announced that it's going to be, I believe, Sammy and Thompson are going to be away. And then Talk and Cousins are okay. going to be home. Which is kind of what we were speculating between me, you, and Chris, and that was the obvious choice because you can only have two. Yeah, I think I think like all three of us agreed that Cousins are probably going to get a lot of, and I think we were kind of debate. Samuelson was not in that conversation. No, no, he was not. You know, good for him. I know the players love him in that room. So, um, yeah, but Tuck, you know, Thompson, you know, two of the guys that have been there a little bit longer. You know, because they are still a relatively young team, and the veterans they do have haven't been there very long. When we were talking about Dahlien getting the C, we were like, okay, Dahlien, that guy getting the C. And then we were like, who's getting an A between Cousins, Tuck, and Thompson? And all three of them got it, and then you add in Samuelson, which 
honestly, I'm okay with this, yeah. to be honest. Like, there's nothing wrong with it. I haven't seen anybody, like, saying what are the Sabres doing. Like, I mean, there's this is the first time I've seen this in my lifetime. I don't know. I mean, if back in the day, the Sabres used to rotate captains. I remember that. I was very, very young, so it's vivid. Yeah. But I do remember hearing something. I mean, about I know that. like when Briere and Jury were in Buffalo, their last couple of years, they were both worthy of being captains, so they would just rotate the sea. I mean, it makes sense though. I mean, but Lindy, like af- even after they left, he was other players wore the sea on different nights. I remember Pommerville was the sea at one. Pommerville was the captain for a few years. Yeah. Brian Campbell wore it a little bit here and there. I think, I think at one point even Jochen Hesch was captain for a yeah, couple of games. I, mm-hmm. So it seems like a Lindy Ruff thing to do. Um, I mean, I don't think he's going to do that with captain. I think Darlene's the, the set captain for that team. Yeah, he is. Ma- ma- makes a lot of sense. I think Darlene, like I said, has grown a lot over the last few years. He had a rough start to his career. He was drafted in a really bad situation. Then the COVID year happened. Don Granado kind of pulled his career out of the gutter. And, you know, now he's finally living up to that hype that was coming out of the draft for him. Like being a franchise type defenseman player. I think he's like one of the top five defensemen in the league. He's did you say Dowling's a top five yeah. in the league? Um, I'm gonna disagree. Okay. I think that Dowling is borderline top five. I will give you that. I mean on one is obvious, Kale McCarr. Yeah. Um I think I'm not gonna go in order, I'm just going off the top of my head right now. But I think Heiskin is borderline top five. Him and Dowling are in the same tier. Yeah, I think they're in the same conversation. Um you have Yossi, you have Fox in the top five. I forgot about Fox. Um, um who else do you have? Um we're Quinn Hughes. You're Quinn Hughes. That's who it is. Um who else? Quinn Hughes has come a long, long way with this defensive yes. game too. But um, I mean, I would say like, obviously number one is Kale McCarr. Mm-hmm. You know, real Yossi, Bel- Victor Hedman belongs in that conversation I, too. Hot take. I think so. The top five that we just named off, I think it's Kale McCarr, Quinn Hughes in their own tier, and then it's Yossi. Um, who else did we name? Yeah. I, I would put Yossi, Yossi above Hughes. Really? I think Yossi's a more complete defenseman. Hmm. I'm not going to go to evolving hockey for this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to try not to. Um, I mean, Quinn obviously is better offensively. He's probably behind. Cam McCarr, we can agree, is the most complete defenseman in the NHL. He could do everything. So, right but now. I who- think Quinn is a is probably more offensive uh, like capabilities than Yossi, but I think Yossi can do more of everything. So right now we're not gonna take age into effect because Yossi's like ten years older than. Is he Quinn that much Hughes. older? Yossi's thirty five years old. I think Quinn Hughes is like he's Quinn not twenty five. Like twenty five. He's not that young. I'm gonna look it up real quick. So who? So you rather take Yossi right now than Quinn Hughes? Oh, I mean, like right now, I probably took Quinn Hughes is younger. I mean, Yossi's probably got a few years yeah, left. Yeah, Quinn of Hughes being... is twenty four. Okay, I didn't realize he was that young. Honestly, I can see why. He's been in the league forever, it I feels mean, like. Yeah. Did he come out as an 18-year-old? I, yes, he did. Okay. Yeah, it feels like he's been in the league for a long time. But, um, you know, I mean, you can't go wrong with either. Um, I mean, Yossi's, they're both captains, so, you know, both good leaders. I mean, I, there's not really a wrong choice there between those no, two. No, there isn't. So <laughs> they're then- both going to be Norris fan, finalists almost every year, you know. Quinn won last year. I don't believe Yossi's won a Norris yet. Yossi has. He has? He okay. He won it recently. Yeah. I think he won it the year before. He was either before Makar or after Makar. Yeah, but um, yeah, I don't think there's a wrong answer between no. Hughes so then and you, Yossi. You, you have that top tier that we listed Those are the off. top three. Like yes. That, Makar, that, like, Hughes, Yossi. You can I pick, think pick Makar certified one, and then yeah. if you say Quinn or holy shit, Yossi, two or three, yeah. I'm not going to be mad at either. Yeah, I think those top three are pretty much then, unmovable. What, you have Fox, of, would you slide Fox four? I put Hedman at four. Really? I think he's I still great. I, I Listen, I love Hedman, but his defense took a huge hit last season. I mean, look at what he's done over his whole career, though. Over Okay, over his career, that's different. He's in my top five easily, but if like we're heading into the season, I think Hedman's still top mm, ten. I don't know. I, I'd rather have Hedman than Fox. I'm going to be honest with you. There's different things that go into this because you have Hedman who he has the leadership. He has all the experience in the world. He has the offensive capabilities, but I think Adam Fox has the offensive and defensive capabilities. But so does Hedman. Hedman is, can be a shutdown defenseman. Hedman can, but it's declining. Like I He's think, older. I, I, mean, I, I know. Look how many this, games he's played. Oh, he's okay, three, he's, he's three. played like six million games. Okay. I I don't know the exact number, but I if it's been over. A and how many play? He's played so many playoff games and too. It's, right, he's he has three cups. Four right. Stanley, no, four Stanley Cup finals in his career. Yeah. So he's he's played. He has two cups. 
No, Hedman has three. Oh, no, two. Sorry, yeah, they, four is two. Jesus yeah, Christ. They lost to yes. Chicago. They, the they beat Dallas. They went two and one. Yeah, they beat Montreal, and then they lost to Colorado. Yeah, so yeah he's that's been my to four, bad. He's been my to four bad. cup finals, three in a row. He's logged like... That's kind of the situation for the whole Tampa Bay team right now. Is like they're starting to get a little bit older, and like a lot of those players that were there, like when they won those cups and had those runs, like they, they, there's a lot of mileage on their bodies right like, now. Same, same I, thing with Vasilevsky. Like he's played a lot of hockey, and he had a down year last year. It's it catches up to you. It was expected too, especially like as a goalie, an older goalie at that, coming off a of hip surgery and not getting any training camp or off season at all to fully prepare. Yeah, like yeah, that was back. probably the most time he's had to rest too in years. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was all expected he was going to come back. I'm, I think he'll be better this year. He will be so much better. Yeah, I think Tampa needs him to be better if they want to be competitive. I, I'm with in you. In the playoffs. Right. I do want to move into the Amazon content that's going to be coming to us. Now, we live in the U.S., so we're not going to be able to get coast to coast. But I do want to talk a little bit about that here before we move on to the uh, series called Face Off. I feel like coast to coast is a great idea because you have NFL mm-hmm. Red Zone popular among the entirety of north america and it sucks because i get it's canadian exclusive and i want to hear in the u.s but i feel like it's going to be a testing thing because a hot canada is the hockey market right like it's going to be the most popular there or like even it'd be very popular in the northeast i know the nhl is expanding its games down to the south with popularity but you know canada's hockey time yeah um but i do feel like this is a great idea. You have on Thursday, starting on October 10th, every single game is going to be aired on that. It's going to be doing live ins, like a live uh, caught ins to every single game. And I think that's sweet. And I guess they're going to have celebrities on the show and that type of stuff. I don't know how the celebrity thing is going to work. Yeah. Because I feel like the NHL is trying to do too many celebrity stuff. Just have it be where just you have be the one show- host. Showcase the sport. I mean, look at what Red Zone does with Scott Hansen. It's just him and like five people pulling up highlights right even if it's not just one host like nfl does have it be like three or four people sitting at a desk like talking and stuff because part of the fun with red zone is the chaos Mm -hmm. in it especially like you know because with the nfl a lot of the games end up in the same parts like it's like almost all the games start at one o'clock right on the nose and a lot of them are in the same quarters, like a lot of them in their two minutes at the same time. Yeah. So you got a lot of chaos going on, especially when all the teams get in the red zone at the same time. And you got him calling like five different games and you got the freaking octo box and everything going on. I, I think the chaos is what makes it special. And I, I, I don't know what their plans are with the celebrity. I don't know if it's like celebrity host or have interviews, but may just make it about the game because I know like the NHL likes to schedule a lot of games on Thursdays. Not typically on Fridays, so it's weird. <laughs> but because um, I remember the, there'll be days when there's like every team in the league's playing on a Thursday, and then there's one game on a Friday night, and it's like it's like I want to watch hockey teams. all Friday. Yeah, like I want to get back from work at like nine o'clock and put on a ten. I want to put on a ten o'clock game and flip through it all night because you know it's the weekend. I don't want to sit. Okay, I don't want to sit there on a Thursday and be like, yeah, hockey, and then be like, shit, I gotta go to bed because I have to work in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, maybe they have some data that backs it up to more people watch games on Thursdays. I bet they I, do. I, I, I don't know, but yeah, I, I, I don't know where I was going I, with that, Listen, but. okay, I'm going to transition over to the NHL face-off stuff because I think that's really cool. That's what we get. That's U.S. exclusive for all of us Americans. Which is nice that we have this one thing. I'm excited to see inside the locker rooms, inside all... Of so this is going over from last season, right? Correct, yes. Yeah, so I saw they had some clips from inside the Oilers locker room during the Stanley Cup final, which is... I have never seen McDavid that animated Yeah, I saw that clip life. of him screaming. I was like, damn, like... I kind of just want to watch the, the Stanley Cup final because they're doing Matthew Kachuk on the Florida side. So yes. you get to see both sides of you know Florida going up 3 nothing in that series, and they're probably having so much fun in the locker room, and Edmonton's like McDavid screaming at him, and then you know it kind of flips, goes into game seven, and it's going to be really interesting to see the dynamics like between the locker room shift and you know McDavid and Kachuk as you go through that seven-game series. Like the Because like the, the table kind of turned, and then game seven, the pressure was on both the teams, and you know, it's going to be fun to watch. I can see why McDavid has a C now. Because he was oh, yeah. in there. Bro. He wants he was it. On yeah. that bro, he was like, dig in. And he was fucking screaming at the top of his lungs, game seven and finals. And I'm like, I live for that, man. I live for it. Well, yeah. I mean, especially that because you're, you're at the culmination of everything that you worked. Like, at the end of the day, every NHL player's goal, like, their lifelong dream is to win the Stanley Cup. Mm-hmm. And when you're at, when you get that close, 
you have to give it your all. And I, I have a feeling that clip of him screaming is probably after they probably went down two or three games to nothing. I, I, I honestly, I think it's because they didn't. Did they have home ice advantage? No, no they, they didn't. didn't. I think it was after game two. Okay. Because he was wearing their away jerseys, and they didn't wear their away jerseys. On yeah, because I believe like after Game Seven, I don't think anyone said anything in the locker room no, for a while. No, it was complete. Yeah, there so were two I did different see that clips. that clip that was circulating when like they were all just like sitting there like crying and yeah. I can't. It's imagine. like you're not gonna scream, dig in after you lose the Stanley Cup Finals. Like there's nothing to dig in with. Like you try. I think they did dig in after they Game did. Three. They did McDavid dig in. Got that shit in their heads. Yeah. But, like I know they went down three zero. But after game three, it was the Oilers and the Oilers power play killing the Panthers. Um, another thing I'm interested to see with the show is, you know, going through like kind of the, the ups and downs, you know, of, you know, going through a full season in the NHL because there's highs. There's, it's a long season. It starts in October. And if you're lucky, it doesn't end until the end of June. So, you know, it's a long, long season, grueling. You got to deal with injuries here and there. You know, you have some really great games. You have some rough stretches. Um, I'm trying to think of the player. I know, like, I saw Swayman, like, Eichel. I'm going to go through the list now. Okay, yeah, go through the players. All right, so first I'm going to go through epi- – there's six episodes, by the way. I'm going to go through six episodes, and then I'm going to name off every player, unless you remember them, about who you're most excited to see. No, just go through them all, yeah. All right, so episode one is Best of Rivals featuring William Nylander and David Pasternak. Episode two is As Tough As It Gets featuring Jack Eichel and Philip Forsberg. Episode three, Learning to Win featuring Jeremy Swayman and Matthew Kachuk. Four is The Captains featuring Quinn Hughes, Gabriel Landeskog, and Jacob Truba. Episode five, Copper Bus Part One featuring Leon Dreisaitl, McDavid, and Zach Hyman. And then Copper Bus Part Two, last episode, Connor McDavid and Matthew Kachuk. I mean, that uh, last episode is going to go. Nice. Those last two episodes are going to both be awesome. I am excited to see Gabriel Landeskog, though. Yeah, they're going to show more of like his rehab process. You I know, don't know. That's what I'm intrigued to see. Because he didn't play, so I mean, I'm sure he was around the team. I it would, maybe it shows of kind of like dealing with issues like not associated with like dealing with the injury issues and the, the mental the side adversity of it. Of yeah. everything. I think that's a cool side because this is about hockey, but it's like, well, we can add a player and. That has the adversity of off ice issues. But he's trying to like get back. He's trying to play again. Like there's there was a legit chance his career rehab. was over. I think there's going to be a lot of talks in there about him really contemplating his NHL career. I'm not I'm not speculating anything, but that's what I feel like it's going to be. I am intrigued with Gabriel Landeskog, but I'm really excited for episode five and six. Oh yeah, I mean that's going to be the juiciest Stanley Cup final. Yeah, that's going to be. I think intense. all of these episodes are really good. The one that I. Don't really care about is the Eichel and Forsberg one. Yeah, I mean Eichel's Eichel and Forsberg's for. I mean, I don't know how much intrigue there is there. Um, I'm kind of don't really care about the Nylander Pasternak episode really? either. I'm kind of hyped. For I'm, that. I'm so over the the Boston Toronto rivalry, especially after watching that playoff series. I felt like it was never going to end. I remember us watching here, sitting here watching Game Seven. We were all just like. This game just fucking end, please. I re- the game was the game seven was bad until like the last ten minutes of the game. Yeah, that, it, it, it was a hard watch. <laughs> it was a hard watch. I mean, I think most of that series was a tough. And watch. then all of a sudden, the end of game seven, there were like six million chances in like two seconds, up and down the ice, and I was like, all right, this is getting good. And I was praying somebody would score, and nobody did. I mean, thankfully, overtime didn't go very long. <laughs> What's that? Thankfully, overtime didn't last. Yeah, very long. Yeah, it was like three and a half minutes yeah. of pass to save the day. Yeah. So we do have some news going on. Do you want to talk about the Dylan Genther extension real quick, just briefly? Uh, you just you have the contract details. Um, yeah, I'm gonna pull it up now because honestly, they're betting on Dylan Genther here. Yeah, it I was a seven it was year a deal. Interesting contract. It was so it was a seven year deal. Um, I believe it was worth seven million, six million dollars, seven million dollars. Um, so let's see it was an eight so it was an eight year 57.1 million dollar extension so he signed a 7.142 aav aav deal doesn't kick in until next season the 2025 2026 season did you hear what um uh clayton keller said about him no dylan genther said that the only person that might have a better shot than genther is austin matthews and that Dylan Gunther can put a 50 goals in his sleep if he tried. Well, of course, he's going to hype up his teammate. I mean, I don't know how good. I love it, though, dude. Yeah, I, I mean, love it. he was good. Like, he played 45 games for the Coyotes last year at 35 points, 18 goals. So, well, he, he did bounce, He did play some games in the AHL last year. He was pretty much a point-per-game player in, in Tucson. But, um, 
His, I mean, in his career, 78 games played, 50 points. That's pretty solid, I will say. Yeah, no, I think he, he can be great. I mean, I think this is the Coyotes like, taking a big bet on him. I I personally would have waited until after this season. No. Yeah, I would have. Dude, I, I personally, I think that if you would have waited until he was a RFA this upcoming season, you're giving him $8.5 million. I think he's mm. I think he's they gonna have, they have a shitload of cap space though. I know, but still, like you can get a guy like Dylan Gunther on eight by seven point one four two to put up potentially a ninety point season in his prime. I just want to see more. That's that's all I'm saying. I mean it like, makes sense. He hasn't sense, even played a hundred games yet. I know, I get it. All right, so do you here are his last few games dating back from March fourteenth to the end of the season. So we have we have so one assist, one goal, one assist, one goal, no points. One assist, one goal, no points. One assist, and then it goes one, 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 and three, two, one, and one. He had a good end to his season. He was right around a point per game, um, and I think that's good. I mean, you want to see the progression and the development from a guy like Dylan Gunther. And but honestly, what the, what this contract signing tells me though is like Utah's serious about winning, mm-hmm. and that was something that was probably never going to happen in Arizona. I wonder if well, a I don't think he gets the extension no I, i'm not sure if he gets the extension i mean they gave sean dersey a pretty good decent extension as was, well was dylan gunther the first guy to get like a full contract under I utah full, i think a full like, eight year that was deal. on the arizona team yeah because i think yeah because uh keller i remember everyone was shocked when keller signed that eight-year contract Everybody with the coyotes was telling him what was he doing yeah i mean he believed in it i mean now he's in a much better situation and this is, listen, if you get one of your young guys to sign an eight-year deal, and now you have Clayton Keller for the next eight years, too. Well, he's not he's not under contract for eight more years, but. Well, I know, but when he signed it at the time, I think it's, what, six yeah. more years, seven more years? Four. Four more years? Including this year, Jesus yeah. Christ, it's been forever. Yeah. I mean, don't, I, but Clayton Keller's still going to sign. I think. I, I mean, I have no reason to believe he'll leave. Especially because this Utah team is going to be good. I think they're going to be, um. Hmm. I think they'll be better. I think they're five, uh, six in the central. I have uh, they're there. moving in the right direction. Right direction. I, I'm with you. I, listen, a lot of people are picking them to make the, make the playoffs. I wouldn't be shocked. I would be a little shocked. I don't. I don't know if they're ready for the I playoffs would, yet. It would be like eyebrow raising for me. Like you know that type of thing where it's like, okay, I see you type of thing. I don't have them making the playoffs. They're going to be in the bubble though. I think. I think they're going to be a little bit better. Um, how about that Kaprizov, the Chicago stuff? Yeah, can you go over that a little bit more? All right, Cause... so I wrote an article on it, which was a great piece. Uh, description, link's going to be down below. Thank you. Um, I appreciate you guys. So Kaprizov never said himself that he was open to going to Chicago. There were just rumors that were circulating on the draft, r- draft floor in June that um, – Kaprizov was interested in going to um, Chicago. And that's an interesting thing for me because it had me wondering how safe is Kaprizov really in Minnesota? And by that, I mean, I don't know if I have him re-signing with Minnesota now. Well, because I, I if think you the go, thing with if, Kaprizov is, is if he stays in Minnesota, they're going to pay him whatever he wants. Yeah, he's going to get a lot of money. But then, like, let's say because we preach all the time that Minnesota is, after this season, they're going to go out and they're going to spend. And then you have all Well, priority number one is still getting Kaprizov extended. Of course, of course. You get him extended. Um, But what if Kaprizov wants to wait it out another season because he can be out? Listen, I'm going to put up a career year, put up 115 You know what? Honestly, I trade him. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, 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 wait. That caught me off guard. After this season... You know, obviously, I think if I'm the Wild, I try to get him extended next summer. Mm-hmm. You know, he's going into the last year of his deal. I try to get it just as soon as possible. You start don't, talks the don't, second. Don't want any because he's going to be a UFA, so you don't want any stress of him playing out that season on his last year of his contract and having the chance of having him walk. If he will not commit to signing a long term contract that summer, I I would just cut my losses and get a haul for him. Would you trade him at the deadline, or would you? No, wait? I, it would be a summer trade. You, uh, he's going to be on the team this full season, and after this season, you know, depending on how the season goes, you know, you approach him with an extension offer. You know, you have some talks, and if he's like completely unwilling to even listen, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm not committing to a long term deal," it's like, "Okay, we're trading you then." And the thing that's going to put the Minnesota Minnesota Wild in a tough spot is 
his value is going to go up if you can get an extension with him and then trade him or have a team be like, listen, when we trade for him, we'll sign him to an extension and have them verbally oh, agree. Well, he and does, he does have a new movement clause, so that might be a little tough. Might have exactly. Hand- might, go to Chicago, baby. Might, might have handcuffed him- <laughs> themselves there. Oh, dude. Is it full no movement? Uh, it doesn't have the terms on cap wages, but I'm assuming it's a, a full no movement clause. If if this clause is a full movement clause, and the Minnesota Wild are like, listen, we're gonna trade you, then I'm like, all right, send me to Chicago. That's it. And I'm like, if whatever, like pull a fucking. I mean, at least get something for him then. Right, but like, imagine the Blackhawks are like, we'll give you a third round pick for him. It's better than nothing. But at that point, if I'm Minnesota, I just let him walk. That's better than nothing. Is what getting the third? I mean, that's true because that third could be, become a superstar for all we know. I mean, if it gets to the point where that's happening, where he's like, I'm not signing a contract extension with you, he's like, okay, then what teams would be willing to waive your movement clause? And if it's one team on the list, <laughs> you call Chicago and like, I mean, it would be stupid if Chicago would trade for him because if his heart is set on being in Chicago after these two years, why trade for him? Just wait till Just the wait. summer. Because then you have the advantage because you know that player wants to go to your team. Obviously, there's tampering stuff, so you can't physically talk to him, but like you know, internally. Yeah, but if I'm Minnesota and like it's like well, you can get, we can just trade for him now, and you can sign a little bit of a cheaper extension now, and not have to worry about it. Shit, if they can get a third. Even if they got a seventh round pick, that's better than nothing. I don't know about that. I don't know if it's better than nothing. Like a seventh round pick is nothing. No, letting him walk in free agency is nothing. You're quite literally getting nothing. I know that, but I would rather have him for the season. What if they get Hendrik Zetterberg in the second, five, seventh round? Okay, listen, I get it. I get it, okay? I get it. It's better than nothing is what you're calling it. But have him for the entire season. Go out, if, if he's like, listen, I want to go to Chicago. And uh, Chicago I'm saying nothing. this is like this is literally like if he's like, I'm not signing a contract extension. Oh, I, I, I know that. I know that. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, if he's saying he's not signing a contract extension, that he's going to walk in for agency. And a team's like, listen, like Chicago, for example, let's say he, Chicago's like, we'll give you a third round, a six round pick for him, for example. Because I think if they do trade him, it have to come with an extension. Like, yes, I don't think it a will. team. Like, a team's not going to give up a hall for him just from the walk. Unless it's a Stanley Cup contender that's going on that knows they can go win a cup right now. Yeah, I don't know. But with that cap pit, I don't know. I, I don't know if. With this cap pit, 11, right? It's yeah, high, it is yeah. 11. It is 11. I think. No, 10. It's 10 nine. or 11. Nine? nine? Nine, really? Yeah. But, I mean,. He's two years away from being a free agent. A lot can change in two years. A lot. You never know the why. I, I don't know how much substance this rumor even it has. has. nothing. I mean, yeah, yeah, players can say they want to play for whatever team they want to, but the reality is they are where they are. A lot of players like stability. You know, I think if, you know, Minnesota, you know, takes more of a, a beggar step next year and then, you know, the Wild are – pretty upfront with him like hey we're going to spend money this summer you know we have some cap space and we're going to get some better talent around you and you can see that commit they're committed to him i think more likely he will sign with them i i think it's more likely than anything he'll stay with minnesota but. i think it's 85 percent chance he stays with minnesota if i'm giving my rough estimate be by him in chicago with bedard would be fun i would watch chicago games every single night no, you wouldn't. Are you sure about that? I'm sure about that. If Kaprizov goes and plays with Bedard, I'll, I'll listen. I I will save this clip anywhere. I'm making this a TikTok right now. If Kaprizov leaves Minnesota and goes to play with Connor Bedard in Chicago when he becomes a free agent, I will watch every single Chicago game. You won't, but Yes, okay. I will. Swear to God. Okay. What makes you think I won't? Life happens, man. <laughs> well, if I'm saying... <laughs> I could be dead by now. I don't know. Well, we're not going to go that far. That's <laughs> we're, No, but. <laughs> yeah. That's going to end it for today's episode. All of our socials are down below as well as the subscribe button and notification bell. If you guys are on Apple and YouTube, head over to our. If you guys are on Apple and Spotify, head over to YouTube. Subscribe for more exclusive content. And also, Instagram, Discord down below as well. Go follow and join our Discord. We'll see you guys in our next episode.